Concept getters, how are you? I hope everything is going well with your exam preparations and that math is going to be easier than it was after watching this video, right? Especially this concept of proving if a particular shape is a cyclic quadrilateral, right? This is basically part B of part A. Part A is going to be found on the description of this video. So if you go down there on the description, scroll down after that, that long message, you're going to see a link and you click on it, you're going to find part A where it explores all the properties that I'm going to mention here and, and, and the concept and the deeper and, 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 right? So here, I'm just actually doing an example of, an, basically another example of that concept explanation that you're going to find in part A. Right, so go first to part A before you watch this, if you haven't watched it yet. Otherwise, even if you are first, like if this is your first time watching my videos, you will still understand this particular one. But to, to get the full grasp of the concept, you have to watch other videos. You know, this, like you have to be in sync with other concept getters. You get my point. I want us to do this one. They gave us CB and AB. And they said that they are tangent to the circle O at C and A respectively. So let's let's look at them. Our tangent C B is this one here. You see this one? It touches the curve at C. And our tangent A B is this one here. And it touches our curve at at A. Right? And then they gave us angle D, which is 55 degrees, is this one here. And then they also gave us the center O or O1, if I may say, which is 110 degrees. It's this one here. So they, they, they are telling us to show by calculation that BCED is a cyclic quad. BCED is this one. BCED, this one here, right? They want us to prove that this is a cyclic quad. If you want to prove if a shape is a cyclic quad, you need to use one of the properties that I mentioned in video part A, right? You have to use one of the properties. But here you can see that amongst the properties that I mentioned, we're going to use the exterior angle of a cyclic quad. So which one? Okay, let's start here. Remember, when you have a quadrilateral, an exterior angle exists if we have an extended side. And then it's going to be this one. And that exterior angle will be equal to the interior opposite angle so it's going to be equal to this one clear right so in this particular diagram that we are given in the question we can see that 55 degrees that is given this 55 degrees here this 55 degrees yes it's going to be equal to which one we're going to say vulture and outside so it's going to be equal to c2 here why do we say c2 is an exterior angle of a slightly quad because line ec is extended do you see ec is extended to a and if it's extended to a it uh, c2 is made by cb and ca so c2 will be an exterior angle because we have an extended side x x right so how do we prove that c2 is 55 degrees you don't just go straight and say c2 equals to 55 degrees because exterior angle of a cyclic quad no it doesn't work like that when you prove if something is a cyclic quad you don't assume that it is already a cyclic quad therefore you can't use a cyclic quad theorem or property do i make sense you use other theorems and properties from other concepts to to get c2 or to get the value of c2 and if when you solve for C2, you get that it's going to be 55 degrees using other methods to find it, then you can say, oh, and I realize that also 50, D is 55. And if D is 55 and my C2 is also 55, then ah, uh, that means this thing is a slightly quad. That's the flow. Do I make sense? So how do I go about this? This is how I'm going to go about it. I'm going to be like, I need C2. That's my main goal. I need to find the value of C2 ignore d ignore that you have 55 degree as in like d here ignore it just say i want to see if i can find c2 and if c2 will be 55 without considering d use other theorems and once you find c2 that it's 55 then you can conclude and then your final final step remember i said in part a your final final step the reason of that step that final step will be the property or the theorem of the property you are using which is exterior angle of a slightly quad so let's just go straight to it now that i've explained how this works like the thinking i'm gonna be like how do i find c2 okay c2 is outside right and i can't use tan cot theorem because uh there's no triangle or a cyclic triangle in here 
but I know that I can find C1. How do I find C1? Because C1 here is inside triangle CAO, right? And CAO has a value, it has one, uh, one value gotten or given, which is O1, 110 degree. But how can I find C1 if A1 is not given? Let me see. Oh man, I have two radii here, which are OC and OA. So that's going to be my first step. I'm going to be like, if I have radii OC and OA, it means C1 will be equals to A1. And therefore, where I see A1, I can substitute by C1 and just solve for C1 using 110, using sum of interior angle in a triangle. Let me just write this, right? Let me just write, okay? Let me just go straight to it. I'm going to be like... um. OC is equal to OA, and my reason will be what? Will be radii, because OC and OA are radii, right? And radii are always equal. Why do I need radii? Because I need an isosceles triangle. In an isosceles triangle, we have equal angles, right? And those equal angles are which angles? The angles subtended by equal sides. So if my OC is equal to OA, it means my C1 will be equal to a1 let's write it i'm gonna be like oh which means c1 will be equal to a1 why why are they equal because the angles c1 and a1 are opposite to equal sides which sides are we talking about radii oc and oa you see here oa is opposite to c1 oc is opposite to a1 so the sides that are equal will always be opposite to or they will subtend the angles that are equal. That's an isosceles triangle. Clear, right? So now that I know that my C1 is equals to A1, I also need to use the sum of interior angles in a triangle so that I can find C1, right? Because A1, C1, and O1 relate in one way or another. So how do they relate? They are angles in a triangle. So I'm going to write it. I'm going to say, oh, again, I can say C1 plus A1, plus O1, right? They will give me 180 degrees. Why? Because sum of interior angles in triangle. So now, look, guys, pay attention now. C1 and A1 are equal, which means where I see A1, I can substitute by C. And again, they gave us O1, which means where I see O1, I can write 110. So I will have C1 plus C1 plus 110 equals to 180. And C1 plus C1 is 2C1, right? And then 110, when you transpose it, when you take it to the other side of the equal sign, you will have 180 minus 110. Clear? So let me just write that step because I wanted to skip it, but ah, man, why, why should I? So I'm just going to write it. I'm going to say... 2C1, because A1 and C1 are equal. So where I see A1, I'm just going to substitute by C1. I'll say plus. What's the value of O1? 110 degrees. It's equals to 180. Right? I will transpose 110 and I will say 180 minus 110. It's going to give me 70 degrees. So basically, I will have 2C1 is equals to 70 degrees. Then I will divide by 2 divide by 2 so that I can get only C1. And I'll say, therefore, C1 will be 35 degrees. I got my C1. If I can have this value here, it means I can have this value here, which is C2. How, Mr. Say? Well, C1 and C2, they relate. They make a particular angle, which is 90 degree. Why are they 90 degree, Mr. Say? Because CB, this line here, CB, is a tangent that they mentioned it in the statement. If you go back to the statement, you can pause the video and read the statement and be like, oh yeah, they mentioned, right? You just pause and read the statement again. So CB is a tangent and OC is a radius. We know that radius and tangent at the point of contact with the circumference where they also intersect each other, they will intersect at an angle of 90 degrees. So we're going to say, oh, so if that's the case, it means I can just go straight. Let me just do this just for swag, right? I'm just going to be like, Voo, so that I can continue writing here just for space, right? So I'll say uh, C1 plus C2, they will give me 90 degrees. And what's my resin? My resin will be tan perpendicular to 
radius. Makes sense. C1 and C2 will make 90 degree because tangent CB is perpendicular to radius OC. Right? And remember, I, I already have the value of C1, which is 35 degrees. So I will substitute C1 with 35 degrees. Then I will transpose it and I will say C2 will be equal to 90 minus 35. Let me just write it, right? I'll just say uh, C1 is what? Is 35 degrees plus C2, which is going to be 90. Then I transpose 35. I'll say, therefore, my C2 is, my C2 will be what? 90 minus 35 degrees will be 55 degrees. Come on, guys. Come on. Look at this. Look at this. C2 is 55. The C2 that we've been looking for is 55 degrees. I told you that if you can get that C2 is 55, automatically it agrees with the theorem that states that an exterior angle of a cyclic quad is, is equal to the interior opposite angle. Because if this is 55 here, it means it's equal to this Zupu. Does it make sense? So I'll be like, oh, now that I got my C2, I'll say, ah, therefore, that's, that's how it goes, right? Therefore, C2 is equal to D, which is also equal to 55 degrees. I mean, come on, my D is given. It's 55 degrees, right? And if C2, if C2 is equal to D, then I can just say, ah, oh, man, that means... So, uh, the quadrilateral B, C, E, D is a cyclic quad. So I'm just going to write the statement. Once you conclude that this is equal to this, once you find it, you prove it, you go straight to the question and say, what did, what did they want me to prove again? They wanted, me, they wanted me to prove that B, C, E, D is a cyclic quad. You write exactly that. You write and say, therefore, B, C, E, D is a cyclic quad. So I click quad. And then the reason, like I said earlier, the reason will always be the theorem of the property you used, which is exterior angle of cyclic quad. So you just say reason is exterior angle of cyclic quad. And then that's it, guys. That's how you do this. That, that's how... Oh, come on, guys. I, I hope you got the concept. So remember to go back to video A in the description. You'll find the link. You watch it. You watch the whole concept about how to approach these type of questions, these types of questions. And then you come back to this one again. You'll be like, oh, now I get it even more deep. And which means any other type of question that's going to come in any different way or in any way, you'll be able to tackle it, right? But... You can't be the only person who understand this. Come on, guys. We want everybody in South Africa, in, in Africa, on planet Earth to find math easy, right? So what do you do in order to help the next person? You just go in here, right? Just in here, guys. You're going to be like, let me go. Let me go. And what do you do after you get in here? You subscribe. In here, you subscribe. And remember, you're going to share with your mates, classmates, even teacher, whoever you know is interested in math. Share so that they can also find math easy or help others, right? And then after sharing and subscribing, what do you do, guys? Because you are a nice person. You are a, an amazing person with a good heart. I know you're going to like. And I know you're also going to comment. You're going to comment with a gratitude and say, thank you, Mr. Sam Paul, for making this easy. And thank you for other videos. And please, may you please try this one again in the next video so that I can answer your questions and help you where I can. Okay. Come on, guys. Go and enjoy your exams. So this is easy. Math is easy. Math is easy. Yo.